What's up y'all, it's Shuffle, and today's video is talking about the Altar of Hope. This is a new version of this guide, it's an updated guide, because I made one a while back when it first came out, but things have changed, so let's talk about what to get, what to avoid, and some other various tips, like I guess farming could be helpful. And so if you enjoy it, let me know what you think down below in the comments, check out the box for all the links, and subscribe, all that cool stuff. Yeah, so... Altar of Hope, this is your meta progression central hub. And this is where all those candles that you pick up randomly, this is what they're for, this is where they go. And this is how you unlock stuff. This is what it looks like when it's fully done. But yeah, so you get the heroes here. You get memories, which we'll talk about, you know, when we get there. And you get the slot machine, the gotcha, whatever you want to call this, those are the working fields, and then the Intrepid Coast is kind of um, some side stuff. But all right, let's talk about let's talk about what to get first. Also, the mountains for cosmetics. And so, first, the first thing to get here at the altar is I would actually say bounty hunter. I know some people don't necessarily agree with that, but just unlocking Bounty Hunter, he is way stronger than any of these characters, for the most part, are going to be at base with no other moves unlocked, with no paths, no trinkets. Bounty Hunter is actually really solid for that. And he's relatively cheap, 41 compared to 61 or 53 up here. And so getting him can really help your games if he shows up. And it's not a huge investment to unlock him. But uh, as far as the other characters go, I would say just get your favorites. There are advantages to unlocking everyone, such as if you're dying a lot, you have more bodies to cycle in. So if you find yourself in that situation, it's good. Or you can focus on trying to max them out or at least get up to the final DBR thing because the in items are nice, but they're really not worth the extra candles. So you could stop here. The DBR is very important. Death blow resist. And so if you make the characters you have stronger, they live longer, you do better. You don't need to cycle them through. But if you just want to keep the game fresh, you can also unlock everyone for that purpose. But as far as who to unlock, uh, really just pick your favorites. Like Man at Arms covers a lot of holes in the... Or he covers a lot of bases, I should say, in the gameplay. Like he's a tank, he has stress healing... He has movement and stuff like that. So you can swap Grave Robber because she's probably the worst one. She's definitely the worst one out of these four. So get someone else for Grave Robber if you really don't like her. You know, you could get maybe Jester would be a solid start or Flagellant. And actually the reason to get Flagellant too is that he does really well. Like the worse it's going. So he can deal with being low HP better than others. He can deal with stress and meltdowns better than others. So he's actually pretty good at mitigating player skill issues however you can still mess up and you know he dies so it's like give and take but long story short pick whoever you want i'd say get bounty hunter you know first just to have him there and <clears throat> even though he takes some candles it really doesn't matter as far as what to get you can stop and finish him or uppercut if you really want to but you don't even need to go this far you can stop at no escape right here and just stick him in the back, especially if you have Grave Robber, and he does fine. So next up, we'll, talk, we'll go over memories real quick. Uh, memories, just don't, don't grab this. This is like one of your last things to do because the bonuses are nice. As you see here, you get little things like plus healing, plus crit, plus damage, resist, stuff like that. These are all really good. But early on, you're not gonna have a ton of confessions open. They cost candles to buy memories and they're, they get cheaper as you go. So that means there's really just no point to doing this first. So uh, if you, and you can do it if you want to, but I would heavily advise against it. I would say this for near the end. Like this is before cosmetics pretty much. And then the working field. So this is the slot machine. Everything that comes out of here is random. So you put in a couple candles that spit something out. And as far as what to get goes, you don't have any choice on what appears but what i will say is the things you want to try and hit are some other source of food so bread is even good enough 
apples and cheese. I can't remember. I think you start with the griddle for flapjacks. So that would be, that's honestly okay enough for your food needs if you really need it. But yeah, the a lot of the stagecoach items aren't really worth it. I mean, they're good, but you don't, they're not as important because some other stuff we'll talk about. But as far as the end items go, getting some extra food is very nice. And then all the other relationship stuff that's not normal, like pig. I think you get pig out of the, the slot machine, so that's very helpful. And whiskey, stuff like that. A lot of this other stuff, you know, Book of Creative Insults, uh, various affinity stuff. The poultices, these are all nice, but they're not like mandatory by any means. And then what else is in here? I think it's combat items. Yeah. So for combat items, the big ones to hit are the heals. So healing salve and triage kit. If you can get the um, altar to spit these out, just stop. You're, you're done. You know, there's a lot of this other stuff is good, but these are, this is the stuff you want. Preferably salve. Salve is still like the best healer in the entire game. So if you can get this, then you're done getting combat items. Some other notable decent ones, though, are things like uh, Dazzlers, pretty cool. Maybe the Intoxicant, that one's pretty good. And, uh, yeah, other than that, like the Powders. Powders are really good, so Blade of Powders, Clotting Powders, and uh, Neutralizing Powders, if they're not in the base pool. Pool, I should say, because it's, it's changed over time. And then... The Trinket one, that's the next one, right? Trinkets aren't that important. This is just like if you have a candle dump, just start throwing them at trinkets. You might get something good. But there's so many of them. So you really have no control over it. So it's just if you have nothing else to do, throw them in here. I mean, if you want to expand your, your fun and stuff like that. But there's, there's nothing in here that's going to drastically change the run that you're doing. And all the hero trinkets come from their, their tracks on the altar. So you don't even need to get them out of the box or the slot machine. So I guess that does it for the working field. Most important thing, some decent food. Um, maybe one or two wagon items just to get something good to keep constantly putting on. Like the Hero Shrine map can be nice to help you get you know more shrines. Combat items, you're looking for salve. And if you don't find salve, then keep going. Like you pretty much want that. Trinkets are at your discretion. As far as the coast, so this is a lot of the fluff, so to speak. Whereas, at least these bottom ones, like the pets, the pets are fun and they're nice. But the wolf cub, you can just unlock this and you never need another pet. You know, for the next couple hundred hours. It's just, this thing is decent enough and it solves enough issues. The rest of them are cool and fun, but they depend on... For the most part how much you unlock in the altar so if you have nothing unlocked these just don't get any value but this is just 10 percent positive relationship chance and you always get this at the first in if you have no other pets available and that's good that's good enough infernal this is really like if you want to farm up candles it's not bad to uh pick these up early you know like corpse light you can deal with the uh, Despairing Flare is a little bit harder, I feel like. And then... Maybe Doom Candle. But I can't remember ex exactly how expensive this is. So, only really get these if you just think it'll farm up your uh, stuff. But this is pretty much pure challenge, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't really recommend this unless you just really want to do it. Because it takes a little bit for these to pay off. And the farther down you go, the more it takes to pay them off. But, you know, they'll pay back in a while. So it's not necessarily bad, but also your win rate goes down. So if your win rate isn't high enough to sustain the farming, then avoid these. For Renown, these are just wagon skins. Honestly, the last thing you need. Just straight up, this is the last thing you probably want. Resourcefulness, there's some good stuff in here. Like uh, bonus items, money. Let's see, repair costs go down. Hospital, sanctuary, that one's really good. Scouting. And uh, refreshments so far in there. And then watchtowers. Like, all of these are good. But you don't have to dump everything into here. Like, well, a good stopping point might be Sanctuary. Because healing the one stress getting there is pretty nice. And then also Respite's nice. I don't know. It, it's hard to say where to stop on this one. 
So just kind of stop when you feel that you need to stop. But I think uh, an easy stopping point is Sanctuary. Maybe Respite. And then Journey, this is a really good track. So you get all of your nice wagon upgrades. So extra slots, extra stagecoach gear, wheel points, armor points, more inventory, run over. What is it? Uh, road debris. So this, this is fine to max. Do you want to max it first? Up to you. If you don't have a lot of stagecoach items, probably not that pressing. You know, you could probably stop at scavenging or maybe this packing down here. And that's that's about it. Like these last ones are really nice, but if you don't have the candles, don't don't go for it. It's okay. And then there's the mountain. This is all cosmetics. This is the same the same thing as the coast, where you kind of save this for last, unless you really just want the stuff. You know, as far as cosmetics go. I say do them last because that's the efficiency, because it gives you nothing besides something visual and something fun. But fun is also something to consider. So if you have a favorite character, like if your favorite character is Grave Robber, and you want to put her on every team, and you want to unlock all her stuff, you know, all of her moves and items and costumes, do it. Whatever keeps you interested in playing the game, who cares about efficiency? So ultimately do what's fun, but in terms of what to go for, as I said, I like to get Bounty Hunter early and then get whatever heroes in whatever order, as many as you want, and level them up as you want. And then once you get a few of these, i probably start here, honestly. Get a couple of these and then go to the coast for journey. And then after that, resourcefulness a little bit. And in between there, like if you find yourself floating like, you know, two, five candles, come to the working field, start unlocking stuff. That's its best application. And then cosmetics last. Alright. I think that's it. So I hope that was informative. And memories near the end. You can do memories, you know, after you get cosmetics and stuff. Oh, we gotta talk about farming too. So the best practices for farming, there are hero goals to pick up on the heroes that you can get bonus candles getting the collector chandelier is really good if you can unlock it i think you actually might start with this one but yeah getting the chandelier is really good picking up every candle you find is very helpful i think the other easiest way to farm is to go to the sluice every time because you get a bonus there take every layer that you can take you know skip the layer one or in the first region if you're not confident um, and then take it in two and three. You should be able to consistently do it if you have some unlocks and you understand the game. But yeah, take those, do hero goals, pick up candles at nodes, and take the sluice. Try and just try and win. Get as far as you can. I'm starting to ramble, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.